of the clothes is extremely important. It's extremely important, but there is a more important hijab, brothers and sisters. The word hijab, as we said, means a barrier, right? Now, when you think about harassment in the workplace, the solution to it is to implement a barrier. What type of barrier? A barrier that minimizes exposure between the two genders. Now, I know some people, the minute they hear this solution, they will say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're out of your mind. You're talking about segregation between the genders. Impossible. We'll never have segregation in our societies. Look, I'm not calling it segregation. I know the word segregation is negative here in the West. Let's not use this word. But you know, sometimes, unfortunately, a problem that we have in, in Western society, sometimes when, you, when we think of certain solutions, immediately our mind shuts down. We don't want to listen. Impossible. You know, it's like a thousand years ago, if you were to say that the earth was round, even the biggest of scientists was not willing to hear from you, was not even willing to listen to you. Don't let words or ideas scare you. Think about the solution and how practical the solution is. We're not talking about complete segregation, but we're talking about minimizing exposure at the workplace. You see, most of our time, brothers and sisters, is spent at the workplace. When you ask a man who works at an office and who has a female co-worker, this man sees his female co-worker more than he sees his wife. Do you know that? That's life here in the West. This man speaks to his female co-worker more than he speaks to his own wife. This is the problem of our society. This is the constant exposure. A female is being constantly, you know, exposed to a man at the workplace. Now the problem is this constant exposure, even an average man after a while, once he feels too comfortable in the workplace, he will make an unwanted advance. He will verbally harass, he will say something inappropriate, make a negative comment about something about her, about her looks, about her body, about her clothes. That happens. This is the biology of males, brothers and sisters. We can deny it all we want. Just look at the statistics. We've got successful men, wealthy men, educated men. All of them suffer from this disease. When you have female co-workers around you in the workplace, Yes, maybe the first month, mashallah, you're a good person, you're shy, you're embarrassed, you have that haya, you're very polite, you're very gentle. But once you get too comfortable with your coworker, two months pass by, three months, four months, one year, what happens? Then you became, you become a perpetrator of harassment. Whether you know it or not, many of them don't have bad intentions. They're not willfully and deliberately harassing. But once they get too comfortable, that's what happens. They begin to make inappropriate jokes, inappropriate remarks. And many of the women are suffering in society. So the solution is minimize the contact. For example, if a company has, let's say, 10 offices, have five offices for the female workers and five offices for the male workers. What's wrong with that? Minimize that daily contact. When you minimize that daily contact, you are protecting 70% of your woman from harassment. You're protecting their honor. You're protecting their dignity. These women are emotionally broken. Psychologically, they're affected. Have mercy on them. But unfortunately, our society does not want to even listen. And you're even saving the economy because we've demonstrated how harassment in the workplace reduces the productivity of our economy. So that's even good for your own economy. Now I know some will object with this common objection. They'll say, look, if you implement this segregation, I know they'll insist on calling it segregation. Fine, call it whatever you want. But this is the solution at the end of the day. Now, if you implement this segregation in the workplace, what happens is those men who are working in their own offices, they will collaborate 
conspire and subjugate women and you will have inequality just like we had thousands of years ago. We need women in every room on top of those men so they don't take away their rights. This is the objection, right? I'm not advocating for complete segregation, brothers and sisters. Board meetings, company meetings, important events, the decision-making process. Yes, everyone should be involved. We're not talking about segregation here because when an employee goes to the board meeting, when a board member goes to the board meeting, the company meeting, it's an appropriate atmosphere. No one's going to try to harass each other there because they're in a formal setting. We're not talking about that. That's fine, everyone should participate. We're talking about the day-to-day -day work. We're talking about the office work that happens every day in the office. This is the problem. When, when these coworkers get too comfortable with one another, especially the males, what we're saying is have a partition here, put them in different rooms, have more people in the same room. There are ways to address this and we can be creative. But for us to ignore this and say, no, fine, as long as women from their own choice, they've come to this company, they've worked, they're working here, they're getting their salary, we have no issue, we're, de we're denying the reality. Where is the honor and dignity of these 70% of women, brothers and sisters? This is a realistic solution. So we're not advocating for complete segregation. In our events, for example, community events that are appropriate, that's fine. There can be some exposure, there can be some appropriate contact. We're talking about a particular disease in our societies that exists in the workplace. It is in, this, in these areas that we need the true meaning of the hijab, the hijab of space. We have the hijab of clothes, we all know about that and it's wonderful, but it's a partial solution. You can have a modest woman who's appropriately dressed at work but even she will not be spared from harassment after a while, after months and after days and after years. Even she will be the subject of harassment because of this constant exposure. So what we need to implement is the hijab of space. Once you observe the hijab of space, brothers and sisters, I guarantee you that 70% will go down. 10%, 5%, you can even eliminate it. But you know what the major problem is? And I'll conclude with this. We have lobbies in our societies who will make it very difficult for such solutions. They will resist such solutions as much as they can. And you know who this lobby is made of? It's normally made of males. We're talking about wealthy, powerful males because they want this, this situation to continue because they're taking advantage of it. They go to work, this man he says he feels powerful, he feels arrogant, he's like look I'm successful, I'm wealthy, I can do whatever I want, I can go to my workplace and I can see these female employees and I can say whatever I want, I can do whatever I want, I can make any comment that I want and it's fun for them, they're enjoying it. That's why they'll never accept this type of hijab, even these men will resist. Not because it's limiting women, they don't really care about that, but because it limits them. And this is the problem. They have a powerful lobby and they're taking advantage. They're exploiting these women. But by implementing the hijab of space, I truly believe that this is one very practical solution that will eliminate harassment in the workplace.